welcome back. This is Jamil and Helen, and we are having conversation in the kitchen at Chickpeas, but we're bringing our conversation to the couch today. today. It's because Helen and I are both entrepreneurs. We're business owners, small business owners, um, mothers. We are also wives. And why it's so important to have this conversation is because as an entrepreneur, we often find ourselves in a space where we are alone. When you're working on your small business, you usually don't have um, a team of 10 people right. who are constantly with you at all times, working your business on a day-to-day you. basis, all those people are not there, um, and they're not always involved in everyday processes of what you're doing in your business, so it can get very lonely. lonely. Very lonely. Um, it can become overwhelming if you allow it to be, and the conversation today is about keeping ourselves in a healthy space. Um, because there's a lot of challenges out there that we deal with emotionally and mentally and it's conversations that are not being had for a lot of reasons fear Mm -hmm. um, rejection the conversations aren't being had because of judgment Mm -hmm. not feeling safe and we wanted to open up this conversation with you and have the conversation about ourselves because maybe you're not going through that and that's great if you're not but we each have shared that space we've gone through it on our own or maybe you know someone who is going through exactly. it and you can share with this them. conversation with them yeah. um or even create a space where you have this conversation held together maybe at one of our dinners um because this is the kind of thing these are the kind of fun conversations that we want to have at our dinners, the dinners that we'll be hosting at 216 and One Chic P, which we hope that you'll be able to attend. These are the type of conversations that are so necessary, that are saving lives actually, that are saving businesses, that are saving relationships, um, that are saving parents and their kids. Um, Helen and I were sharing that we both at times in our lives have some challenges with depression. Um, yes. Oh my God. Right? Entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship depression. I don't think is talked about enough. Mm-hmm. And for all of those reasons that you mentioned about the loneliness, um, the hills and the valleys of being an entrepreneur, and the influx of money that comes in, mm-hmm. and then the dry spell. Yeah. And this is not for sissies. Like it's it's hard it's it's hard it's hard. Not only is the work itself hard. I mean, usually you follow your passion, you become an entrepreneur for whatever right. reasons you're doing what you love. But um, just the running of the business, and you know, most companies have investors or they have stockholders, so there's money coming in. Whether or not they're making money, losing money, like you hear about a company going bankrupt, but yes. like how are they still in business. They have people pouring money into their businesses. Right. I myself, right, don't have that kind of money being poured into my business. I'm a small business, and a lot of small business owners don't have just investors investing in their business and constantly getting money. So it can be extremely daunting, Mm -hmm. and those dry spells, those dry periods, I'm learning how to deal with them. Um, As you go on, you learn what your dry spells are, what your dry periods are, and how to deal with them, and where to um, spend your time. And but when they happen. It oh can baby, be overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Yeah. And I had a horrible summer. Yeah. I was telling you that I had a horrible summer. It was just one of the worst summers I had. The depression was it was I was so super depressed. But like I couldn't think... get out of the bed depressed. Like, you know, I was pretending that I was sick depressed. You know what I'm saying? It was yes. it was terrible. Yeah. And towards the end of the summer, I I don't know what happened, but I think it was thinking of this fourth quarter for me, you know, I mm-hmm. sell clothing. And so usually the fourth quarter is like when most retailers make most of their money. So yeah. um, I think that just sparked a little light in me. And I was like, you know, it just, I, I just got to get through this, you know, but yeah. you know, I'm not the only one. You're not the only one. There's so mm-hmm. many women. There's so yeah. many men. There's so many people who go through this and we don't talk about it. We don't get together and talk about it. We're like, how's business? Oh, it's great. Right. So I was just sharing with Helen that I had, a, um, I had my bout last week where I was challenged with, um, moving out of a position, not being retained for a job that I had to go into a new space with the new company that was taking them over, um, knowing that I didn't even want to be there, but still feeling a type of way about not being retained, feeling less or not worth um, the time of that company. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Why not? But I had to, I had to go through that valley mm-hmm. to really understand 
you know where I'm being taken and really respect that not everything is for me right and it's okay I won't be chosen by everyone and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with me it doesn't diminish my value but what I do need to get is everything's not for me and I need to really really hone into the space of what's for me will be for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what's not for me will be just moved aside and be okay with that some a lot of the times that I find that my depression comes from and I'm speaking for myself because I don't want to speak for anybody mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. where mine stems from is not feeling valued okay. and um, feeling like, well, you know, again, why not me? Why, why wasn't I chosen? And again, having to really step back in the space of saying, you, you don't need to be chosen for everything. Right. Um, you're chosen for the things that are right for you. You don't have to be chosen for other things because those things are not going to serve you. You're not going to be able to serve whoever or whatever it is of the space that they're in. So why go there? Right. Why be there? Let the people who are going to be the best at being there be there, and you be the best at being where you, you are. are. Exactly. And I had to, I had to remind myself, and I also shared this with my son last week. My grandfather, um, my grandfather had a high school education. He always said to me, "I want you to remember that." You know, these schools that you go to, they're not all that smart. They're not going to teach you everything. They're not. I used to get so upset they're about not. that, Helen. They're I used not. to be like, what does he mean? You know, is he trying to call my teachers dumb? No. They're not going to teach you everything because you're not going to learn in life that regardless of what you do right. or what the next person does, as long as they're being excellent at what they're they doing. Do. yeah. And they're doing it from a place of giving, a place of love, a place of compassion and gratitude, then that's all that matters. Their life is going to be fine. It's going to be good. It may not be the life you've dreamed of, right. but it's going to be a good life. Right. And I think we get so caught up in the sparkly, shiny thing. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That we forget about the things that truly matter and everybody has value. Um, everything you do, my grandfather used to always tell me, I don't care if you're pushing pencils, if you're be mopping the, best, the floor, right. be the best at whatever it is you're doing. Be the best. Let people say that you are great and amazing at what you did, no matter how small it may seem or how grand it is. Right. Be the best and be amazing at it. And I had to remind myself how important that my is. My voice said to me, you know, you should call Helen and have a conversation with her about where you are, what you're feeling. And I was so concerned about making her feel down. Same. And that's why we don't share. Yeah. Because I think the same thing. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should talk to someone, but then I don't want to bring them down. Mm -hmm. And then, especially if you have a group of women and you know what's kind of going on in their lives and they're talking about, oh, they've lost this. or they, they have, Everyone has their issues. Right. So why am I going to call you with my issues to make your, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, And I think that's why we alienate ourselves because mm -hmm. we think... Um, that I don't want to bring this person down and they don't need my negative, not that I have, not that it's negative energy, but my blues. Right. Right. You don't they don't need blues my blues. So I don't right. want to share my blues with them. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you find out, like when Jamil said that to me, I was like, oh my God, I was going through the same thing. Yeah. And I had a conversation with some other women within this past week who were kind of going through the same thing. And it was like, we just all need to get together and talk. Talk about it. Talk about it. And, and share it. Yeah. Not in a way to dump it on each other, but right. just to lighten your load. Let me right. lighten your load. Right. Give me some of your whatever it is you're yeah. going through. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to make a commitment um, today to myself and to Helen. So when I do get in that space again, I don't care if it might bring you down a little bit. I'm going to call you a right. day. Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. And same here. Thank you. Because we're really, I yeah. mean, we, we really have the same... As entrepreneurs, I get it, mm -hmm. and you get it. Like, and sometimes you just need to push off of each other. And um, yeah. I think I, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what we need. Yes, absolutely. So we decided to share that with you today because maybe this little segment of conversation in the kitchen is the thing that's going to bring you back up today. We hope it is. If you're feeling down, and if you're not, and you know someone who is. Share, it, Share with it with them. them. Yeah. Share with them. Um, be that space for them. And also remind them that they're in a safe space. I think that's the biggest issue that we have in not sharing with each other is not feeling safe enough to have the conversation. Um, and because you're having a moment of what you may perceive as weakness, it's not. It's humanity. Right. You know? Yeah. 
it's just being human. It's going through the throes of, of living a life that you, you know, the dream that you want to have. It's not always going to be roses and sunshine, right. right? How we work so hard at being different. You know, we're all unique. And I find that you're always going to be different from the next person. You're never going to be the same. I mean, hell, your fingerprint. Right. It's totally, yeah. Is, is different. Never. Everyone never has a different be. fingerprint, right. right? So you're already unique. You know, just remind yourself, if my fingerprint's not like anybody else's, well, then I'm already unique. Exactly. Designed by God. Exactly. Purposefully. To be different. Exactly. To be different. But right? we work so hard. To be the same. No, we work so hard at being absolutely different. For me, I find mm. us working so hard at being so different from each other instead of really working hard at finding the commonality that we share mm -hmm. and growing from that space. So there's no love there. For me. That's a good way to look at it. Because I was thinking of it as some of us work so hard trying to be the same thing someone else is. Mm -hmm. And then we're upset with ourselves when we fail at being someone else. You know, for example, I'm just taking everyone, uh, Beyonce is like yes. just on everyone's tongue all the time. But, you know, why I try so hard to try, to try to be a Beyonce? There is another Beyonce. There's a Beyonce. There's no, there are no other Beyonces. Right. Be yourself. I can only right. be the best Helen I can be, right? And so right. in that space, I'm going to be amazing. But mm -hmm. we don't get that. Like, we try to be, you know, even with designers, they try to copy each other. They try to be exactly what the other person is mm -hmm. doing. And then you wind up finding yourself failing and feeling horrible because you can't attain that. Yeah, because that was not for you. Right. You are for you, right? So you are your blueprint. So I kind of, you know, that's kind of, um, and, they, and how people say comparison is like the worst form of... Oh. Not flattery. What is it? Oh, hold on. Let's, I think it is flattery. flattery. It but like comparison, oh, comparison um, also is like a poison. When you're all, always comparing yourself to somebody else. But I also find that we, we try to be so different from one another in that, you know, I don't want to look the same like you look. Right. Even though I want to do something, I might want to do something that looks like what you do because I'm fascinated by it. It moves people. It draws the things that I want drawn to me. In that respect, yes. But I always also find that I find that I'm in circles of people who want to do everything so vastly different, different. from one okay. another because they want to stand out. Stand out. Okay. Gotcha. You're already a standout. That's yeah. the thing. You know, you don't need to work so hard to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. That's the part I'm talking about. You know, and, and instead of doing all this work on being a standout and being standing so far away from everything else so that you, the light spots and shines on you, why not just be a compliment mm -hmm. yeah. to the, to the, right you know, the genius of whoever it is that you're admiring, mm -hmm. how can you compliment that genius so that you both stand in the light? Right. You know, that's... That's a good way to look at it, too. Yeah. That's the thing that I was mm -hmm. reflecting on. Because yeah. we're all coming from one source. Right. I think that's forgotten a, a, right. quite a bit. And that's... Your, I think you're right. That has a lot to do. You know, and I think that a lot of times, that's also the reason why we get caught up in not having the conversation about, you know, being in our lows and our valleys is because of the judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, we're afraid of the judgment. Why we work so hard to to look and seem different because we want the judgment to be of this, you know, image right. of perfection that we exactly. create. Exactly, but that doesn't It doesn't exist. always work. Well, and it, it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Exactly. Um, thank you for popping in to just watch yes. our segment. We'll be back coming at we'll you again. We'll be back. Stay tuned for lots of things coming up. Yeah. Bye.